Hello, everybody, Hi. and welcome to this uh, webinar. I immediately give the floor to Roberto Trasarti, which is the project manager of Subidata Plus Plus and the VP leader of VP7. So, hi everybody, thank you to be here. So, um, I will take only five minutes of your time uh, because we have a lot of things to, uh, to present. Um, so, the, we are here to present uh, um, the, the so big data infrastructure. Uh, actually, we are for uh, mostly of us, uh, we already know, already know uh, that uh, we moved from a project uh, called the Subic Data to a, a new project called the Subic Data Plus Plus. Uh, in here, actually, um, in this webinar, we will not present in the, in the, the, the objective of the project or uh, um, many details because uh, otherwise we, we will take uh, uh, too much uh, time. Um, but I mean, I will uh, leave uh, here some links uh, that are useful uh, in order to understand uh, the context for the people that uh, uh, may want to uh, uh, know something uh, if uh, uh, they are not uh, uh, aware of it yet. Uh, actually, the, the new project, so Beta Plus Plus, uh, it's a bigger project because we moved from uh, 12 partners to 31. So uh, we more than doubled the, 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 the partners. So, um, what we want to do with this, with, with, uh, with this uh, webinar is to have an overview of the actual Subitata infrastructure, uh, which, uh, which is composed by the website, the gateway, the catalog, and the exploratories, uh, but also um, with, um, uh, I mean, the, the infrastructure is equipped with uh, an engine uh, able to uh, perform experiments online and uh, uh, I mean, various, various methodologies in order to uh, import uh, new, new methods. And actually, this is what we hope uh, will be um, uh, tool, the, 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 the tools that uh, the, part, the new partners will, uh, will use. Um, another more, uh, very important thing is the fact that uh, uh, we want to evolve our infrastructure. So uh, starting from what we have now, uh, we will uh, uh, we will have uh, a review process in order to uh, see if we can improve the the, interf the, the interface uh, and inter inter the um, uh, infrastructure uh, as all. Well. So th this is uh, this webinar is actually the, the um, phase zero of uh, um, this uh, process of review. We already selected uh, a panel, uh, a group of people that will. Uh, uh, perform uh, the review of uh, the various parts and with this webinar it's also part of the, the first presentation of what we have and then uh, we will move to phase one two and three in order to uh, understand which are the changes that uh, are uh, uh, needed by the, the infrastructure or i mean suggestion how to improve uh, the user friendly the user friendly <laughs> uh, or, um, uh, I mean, whatever comment or suggestion uh, is uh, useful. It's not a, a new thing because we already did uh, this uh, for the, the first project at the beginning. And um, uh, actually was, went very well in the sense that uh, the, the, the difference between the, the usage of the platform before and after the, the, this, uh, this uh, review process uh, was uh, impressive. Uh, the last things that we want, uh, I want to point out is the fact that um, uh, consider the, the, our community and the people that are uh, uh, in this community, um, which are not only computer scientists, but also journalists, uh, social scientists, uh, economic, I mean, as uh, many of the partner of the, of the new partner that, of the project, uh, we are enlarging uh, um, the, the the target of uh, of the of the, the Soviet infrastructure to many different fields. So it is something that we need to keep in mind uh, during uh, the review process uh, um, 
in general. So uh, I think my time is uh, finished <laughs> and uh, I will uh, leave the, uh, the floor to Valerio, which is uh, the, a member of the team of the Sobic Data, uh, the management team of Sobic Data, and actually also the, uh, the real project manager uh, from now until September because I'm out. <laughs> Okay, Valerio will present us the Sobidata services. Okay, good morning to everyone. And I'm going to uh, share with you some uh, ideas behind our uh, services. Essentially, uh, the main site is uh, the one presented by, by Roberto. This is the, the entry point for all the services related to our research infrastructure, not only the e infra, but all the activities related to so big data, also the physical one. For example, the, the site is divided in two, in two, three main parts. On the starting on the right, you can see participate. This part is uh, related to the fact that you can interact directly to subic data people for example uh, through transnational calls that uh, will started uh, essentially uh, transnational calls should be uh, started from the beginning of the project but due to covid problems uh, we cannot start uh, yet but we think to start this call so we okay we can start in in september and here you can find all the information uh, for apply the the, the calls uh, and for the people involved and of course uh, by clicking here an external uh, an external uh, uh, Mem an external um, society, an external company can be a sort of uh, associate member to so big data one. And uh, I want to highlight also the, av the availability of a MOOC on privacy and, uh, and ethics. In, in the central part of the site, you can find uh, all the activities and uh, all uh, the items, uh, all the products. As, a, as I want to, to, to say, related to so big data. For example, a user that at this stage is not required uh, a login can interact with catalog to see all our products, but a user can download, for example, newsletter by clicking here. You see the page where you can find all the issues of the newsletter. And then all the events related to the so big data uh, project and so big data research infrastructure. Some events are highlighted also into a slider on the top of the page. But here you can find all the events. In this case, we, we have uh, in, uh, the data tone, but you can find also events related to data science PhD, symposium. Of course, this uh, this. Uh, events uh, are scheduled before the emergency but you can find all the information related to uh, the activity and cl by clicking here you can see all the event on the left part last but not least you can explore the different natures of so big data essentially we uh, in in the, in the first project we decided to uh, tell stories about our research uh, through uh, big, big, uh, small projects, let me say, that are called uh, exploratories. We have uh, at the moment six exploratories. I want to highlight that uh, this site will be uh, updated uh, uh, very soon with the new one exploratory for so big data plus plus. At the moment, we are under evaluation for the old project and we have uh, to wait. Uh, some days before changing and then we have uh, training training material I, I want to to go more in detail in only in some aspect for example a user can interact with catalog without uh, 
uh, any login. The catalog uh, is uh, uh, easily uh, searchable. For example, a user can search all the items related to one exploratory by clicking one of these links or can see all the data set into the research infrastructure by clicking the seat or methods or application because the, the, the catalog is fully comprehensive. We have a, a different kind of product, data set methods, and the user can, can uh, in, in a unique way to search of them. Of course, we have a lot of, uh, for example, by clicking text money, you can find all the items related to uh, text mining approaches and so on and so forth and as easily to understand is if I, I can find uh, I can find for example all the items related to the mobility it's important to see here we have uh, the number of items you can also uh, reorder the, the item and you can see the distribution. For example, if you if you want to see all the all the methods, you can push here, and you activate a filter that uh, show you all the methods related to mobility. And of course, you can uh, activate other filter, or you can remove a filter, and you see all all the uh, list of methods. And of course, you have a lot of tags. These tags are also filters and you can push in by here you can filter the the item you want and of course you can click here but if you are not logged in if you are not registered to the research infrastructure you can only see the metadata related to this this catalog this uh, this item sorry and uh, and uh, the, the system uh, recall you that for viewing this PDF file, in this case, you must be logging. I come back into uh, main site and uh, uh, for showing you how you can go to the research infrastructure, to the infra services. On the bottom of the page, you can click on login and you, you reach this, uh, this page. In this page, the first page is related to sign in or create you can create an account if you don't have it or you can sign in into uh, research infrastructure by using linkedin or uh, uh, i don't i don't see because i have a, a part of uh, okay linkedin google uh, or uh, academic account this this page is uh, is uh, also a way to present all the virtual research environment related to so big data project by clicking explore virtual research environment you can see all the virtual research environments for example here the catalog that we already seen partially but you can see all the exploratories these are the exploratories currently available but also the access is not always public for example we are working on this exploratory and for the moment and for the moment is not uh, public yet you cannot access to this exploratory by because it's private or we have uh, an other kind of virtual research environment where the request uh, is uh, moderated by uh, the, the the administration of virtual research environment the user request to access the the virtual research environment and the moderator can uh, accept or or not the the request we hear the catalog as we've seen before here another page where you can find all the exploratories related to big data so we are going uh, quickly more in detail into the research infrastructure the the main page of research infrastructure is this this is the big data gateway on the left you can assess the exploratory defined on the right you can access to the bre related to a learning area or, or the so big data lab then you can submit id and so on and in this part in the middle part you can access the application for example 
for example, the famous tag me for uh, semantic uh, uh, annotation of uh, text, Twitter monitor for getting or aspect related to uh, uh, mobility and uh, uh, managing spatiotemporal data. For example, the, the main core in my view is always uh, the catalog. In this case, uh, the, the search can be the same as we've seen before. In this case, I'm, I'm going to search something about sentiment. The part is the same as before. But in this case, uh, we can see we have a training modules, a training uh, lesson that you can download by clicking here. But in this case, since we are logged in, we can access fully uh, to the full uh, research related to the research infrastructure. In this case, if I want to run this method, I simply by clicking here, and pushing here, I can access to the method engine that we we, we will see in, in the next part of this webinar. And the user can simply select the input file, given some input uh, uh, parami parameters, and then start the computation and verify the computation and, and so on and so forth. Uh, this is essentially all we can I can we can show briefly. Uh, I want to spend just two words on, for example, the explore part. Also in this part, by clicking city or citizen, for example, you can access to a page where you see the the all the the description. And also in this case, you can reach the catalog to see all the products related to this uh, to this exploratory, or can access to the VRE related to this exploratory. This is important because this exploratory, for example, has a story that you find on the top of the page, and the story tells uh, a way to use uh, a, a, proof of key, a proof of concept or a workflow for using some uh, products related to, to this story. Okay, I, 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 I am in time, and maybe I give the word to, to the next speaker. Okay. Beatrice, go. Thank you, Valerio. Uh, now I give the floor to Massimiliano Assante. Massimiliano Assante from, is from CNR, and uh, his main contribution is uh, in uh, WP9, e infrastructure and uh, supercomputing network. He's task leader in uh, task uh, 9.1, infrastructure core services. Oh. Um, components and task leader in uh, task 9.2 9 social mining computational engine. Um, Massimiliano will uh, present us how to execute an experiment and how to integrate a new method. Please, Massimiliano. Thank you, Beatrice. So, um, we're going to see. Um, how uh, to execute an experiment, to actually execute an experiment in the infrastructure. I'm going to talk about how to use the method engine from an end user point of view, but I'm going also to tell you a bit more on the technical features that we have developed in Sobic Data One. So uh, I, let me uh, underline again that uh, what you're going to see today is the legacy that we brought to Sobic Data Plus Plus from Sobic Data. So is the, the the method engine that we're going to uh, that we want to improve of course in this in this project uh what i i, I will also talk about the, the 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 philosophy that we follow uh in designing this uh this method engine uh but first the context so um the Soviet data infrastructures high level view and uh, Valerio uh, well explained it before, the Soviet data infrastructure is made of uh, virtual research environments in terms of exploratories, laboratories and services, but also uh, methods in terms of software and standalone application data sets uh, that are accompanied with rich, rich, rich metadata description as we just saw. And it is important to stress here that the Big Data e infrastructures uh, gives access uh, that both the catalog and the VREs give give access to the the methods and the datasets. So I'm going to talk about the methods in this presentation. So 
how to execute them and how to import them while the, 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 the next presentation, which is, will be the last from Pasquale Pagano, will talk about the catalog and the data sets. Uh, just a punctualization of virtual research environments uh, that in so big data are, um, um, uh, are mechanisms to aggregate resources and to provide a thematic view on these resources. So um, it, in, in this case, the, the, so the hardware resources provided by the GAR, Italy, uh, Italy Consortium, d science and GATE, um, which were the main hardware provider and main uh, see machines uh, provided infrastructure provider in so big data one um, these resources are abstracted by the d science which in turn is able to provide a vre system which is what uh, we used to implement all the uh, gateway features so method engine in a nutshell what is it? Uh, the method engine helps scientists in performing in silico experiments. It supplies pre-cooked methods as a service, uh, but of course, uh, we will see that you can supply your method and it will become a service. It allows you to perform calculation in a seamless way. And more important is that you can share the input, the results and the parameters with your colleagues by means of the virtual research environments. Okay, let's talk about the features. Um, so it is a data analytics platform, of course. Uh, for each method, you will gain, you will obtain a graphical user interface and in an HTTPS access by the OGC WPS standard. I have slides on it uh, in just uh, after this one. Um, for each execution of uh, you, we the, the the analytics platform generate a, a provo file, so the provenance is managed, and uh, it. And it, uh, the method integration is supported via a dedicated tool, which is called uh, Software uh, Algorithms Imported, which is extensible with respect to the supported languages that it supports, and it, it will be subject of the next presentation. A note on the web processing service, um, which is uh, on the stand standard, which is, as I said, an open geospatial consortium standard. It provides rules for standardizing inputs and outputs for geospatial processing service, but we reused it and we generalized it. And it defines how a client can request the execution of a process, facilitate the publishing of geospatial processes and clients discovery, and allows data to be delivered across a network or uploaded on the services, on the servers. As I said, this is the main picture, right? So um, in so big data, the idea is that you have your script, your software, and through the method importer, which I will show you later on, uh, the method will go in the method engine. So now we will focus on the method engine part, on the execution on the methods, once that the methods are already imported. About the engine naming, you will, probably already see it. The software product, so the method engine is called data miner. It's not just about data mining, but it's, you know, the name that we gave it uh, a while ago and uh, no, it is uh, it is the software product name. So I guess you're curious to, to see uh, where is uh, and the method engine? Actually, Valerio already showed you this. We have a so big data laboratory virtual research environments that is accessible and available to every user of the infrastructures. Of course, they have to register first. Uh, but of course, is if your exploratory um, uh, supports uh, you know, the, the, the method integration, I means if the members of the exploratories uh, have uh, integrated their methods through the, so the method importer, um, there is, of course, some exploratory that have, have 
the uh, method engine also in the exploratory page. So let's see them. I, have, I will show you now a quick demonstration. Okay, so we'll go to submit data. I'm going to log in. So now I'm going to show you, for instance, how to, um, so I will just uh, go to the first exploratory that Valerie already showed. Here you can see that there is a story investigating city mobility and the possibility to select the, the town. Here I will find, for instance, uh, a statistical uh, validation of networks method, which is a statistical method. I want to know more information about it. Here I see a lot of uh, information about it. And um, as you can see here, I have the catalog, the catalog link. So, now I'm landing exactly on the statistical validation method metadata, right? But as Valerie shown, it is possible to run the method in the lab. So I will go, I think I clicked the wrong. Okay, yes. So we'll go to the resource. I will go in the method engine and we'll run it. So let's see what happens. This is a statistical validation network. I have already a bipartite uh, sample CSV, which I'm loading from my workspace. In here, you can see that uh, uh, they, the, an automatic, automatically an interface is generated for your method. So this is something that you define in the imported phase. So there are a number of parameters that you can choose. I will just say this is a bipartite uh, network and I will start computation. So in this, in this uh, moment, the, the, the method is being run into the infrastructures. As you can see here on the top, while it's very quick, of course, uh, as you can see here, I have um the possibility to see the equivalent uh, request which i can pass so this is a, a, a an http request that i can pass to uh, my other colleague just like this and it can be executed uh, in in uh, within another within uh, another system so for instance just by um by Pasting it into the browser, right? So uh, I can uh, I can get uh, an equivalent get request. And this is the, the, the result of the equivalent get request. I have a link to monitor the computation in the interface because of course not all the computations takes five seconds, right? So um, you can monitor the computation uh, and I will show you uh, also that of course the the output the, of the method produces multiple results um, there is the possibility of course to see the log of the computation and to download the results so if I click download automatically a file is downloaded for me and in this case um, the output of the results is uh, a set of CSC, CS, CSV file. Great. Okay. Uh, what else you can you can use in the data miner? So, as I was saying, not all the um, not all the computation takes five seconds. Perhaps you know it takes they can take hours. So there is uh, uh, the possibility to click check computations and in here you can see a table of all the, the, the computations, all the methods that you have run until now. 
In particular, so let me just. Uh, in particular, here I see the computation that I just ran now. So the May twenty one. Course and what what can I, what I can do? I can I can of course uh, see all the 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 report of the computations. In this case, in this case, I see the output results. So, for instance, the log file and the the, the download. But I can also download the input parameters that were used to run the computations, right? And see what, uh, how they were set when you ran the computations. I can see some computation details when it started, when it ended, the status and the VRE that were used, and the, the operation details that, uh, of course, is, uh, uh, is that val in this case. What I can also do from this panel is to resubmit the same computation by using the resubmit button and to see uh, a number of properties that we attach to the to each computation, for instance, uh, uh, also which is the user that ran the computation uh, on which uh, on which uh, virtual machine it was ran and download the number of the input list and so on. What I can also do is to uh, use the access the data space facility and in this case again for each computation that I ran I can see uh, and download uh, the output data sets that uh, are the result of the computation but i can also see the input of the data set that were uh, used and here i see everything okay now I will le let's talk more more about this in the presentation so some details about what you just saw. So the method engine, uh, so each, each uh, you will see in the next uh, presentation that each user in the infrastructure have uh, a, a workspace, a sort of uh, cloud storage, uh, just like Google Drive or Dropbox. Uh, so whenever you uh, execute a, a, a method, uh, um, a, the data mi a data miner folder is automatically created in your space. And what does it contain? Uh, it contains the computation folder with the, so the, the overall computations folder and a folder is created for each computation, single computation, so for, for each method run with the input and the output data. And of course, uh, as I was saying, uh, it contains also the uh, provenance information that we automatically, uh, the, the method engine automatically creates whenever once is, is uh, when one run is, is performed. Um, there's also an overall input data and an overall output data folder containing, of course, input data and output data. So, here I want to uh, talk uh, a little bit uh, uh, about the, the provenance. So the provenance, as you know, is an information about the entities, the activities, and the people involved in producing a piece of data or thing, which can be used to form assessments about its quality, reliability, or trustworthiness. Uh, so uh, the Provo file that we uh, generate uh, is an ontology that express the prov data model using the OWL2 web ontology language. And thanks to this, uh, in, well, we have a set of classes, properties, and restrictions that can be used to represent the, and interchange the information that generated in different systems and under different contexts. So this is what uh, allows us to 
say, create, uh, to maintain provenance. And, uh, and the, the philosophy behind this product is that we want to enable the three R's, or usability, repeatability, and the, the, the reproducibility of the, of the experiments. So through the data miners, so we saw that we use the standard. So we use the WPS standard to, to, to execute the computation. We use a provenance uh, by, uh, with a XML Provo file. And we use self-consistent component objects. So as we see in the world space, for each method run, you have uh, everything. So the input data, the output data, you can access uh this the input data and the output uh, results that were generated from your execution and in doing so we also uh enable collaborative collaborative experiment because the the folders can be shared among the users and they can work collaborator co collaboratively on this on the on the execution of experiments and because the the WPS standard uh, and because each method actually is is also um, callable via via um, HTTPS, uh, so it becomes a web service. Uh, it, it, we enable also the possibility to run the method through third-party softwares. Now, in the next in the next slides, uh, we will talk about the importing uh, of methods. Yeah, I want to uh, say here that uh, uh, already that the code privacy is guaranteed. So what what happens here is when you import a method is that uh, uh, of course the method provider updates the method in his private workspace and um, and the, the service downloads the methods on the fly, so that there is a user that executes an experiment on his or her data, uh, but uh, it doesn't see the method code, right? So uh, the output, the input, and the, and the parameters can be shared with other users, but not, of course, the, 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 the method itself. And this user can execute the experiment again and share the computation with the other user. In these slides that we will make uh, available uh, after this the presentation, of course, there is a, a I, I placed this uh, this documentation uh, links which are uh, useful uh, to get acquaintances with uh, with the, the tool and to communicate. Uh, you can use the support of the for science .org, um, link and. The presentation about the method engine is is done. Uh, Beatrice, I don't know if we have any questions. Yes, yes. Emiliano, no question at the moment. I recall if you have any question, please write it in the chat. And for complex question, please write in the chat that you ask for the floor. But uh, apparently everything has been very clear, Massimiliano, because uh, no question. <laughs> So you can uh, go to the, to the next uh, presentation, and uh, okay. if some questions arrive, we will talk about it later. Yes. So we we move quickly to the next presentation, which actually I will show you how you can import a method in this method engine. Just give me a second. Okay. So this is um, the method importer tutorial. We will talk about the tool, uh, which is a web application that we developed. Uh, that we developed. Uh, that we developed in the Subic Data One. Sorry, Massimiliano, I interrupt you. 
a question arrived that finally uh, Marco Letter asked if the input data on, of an experiment is physically copied into a repository where it is uh, referred to by the proof of ontology of the experiment or is it only referred by a link? Oh, yes. Uh, this is a very, very uh, good question. Uh, of course, um, the input data of an experiment can be also uh, uh, um, can be a data set, of course. In, in this case, you can copy it in the word space. So it's physically copying to repository. Uh, but it can happen that uh, um, that uh, perhaps your um, your uh, method reads data from a database. This is also possible. Of course, we we will have to uh, register the, the 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 database in the in the infrastructure to make the 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 the. the the method aware and capable of reading the, the tables from the database and in that case uh, we don't copy the database in the in the in the word space but somehow it's it is still part of the infrastructure so it's still it is still a resource a resource of the infrastructure and if you want to see it uh, in an abstract uh, way um it is part of the repository let's say that but not copied in the in the in the case of database it's not copied in the word space but in, in the in the other cases uh of course you upload the file or you upload the csv a data set whatever everything is physically copied into a repository otherwise we cannot do not guarantee provenance i hope i answered a macro question. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you very much, Massimiliano. You're welcome. Uh, right. So, methods importer. So you have your script. It can be in uh, uh, almost any language. So Python, R, Java, C++. We also support NIME. The nine workflows lately. Uh, so the you, you you use the method importer to um, to to import your your script. There is an automatic in integration process, and the resulting uh, is the web user interface and the web service, as we just saw in the previous slides. How do you import? Uh, how do you look? Where is the, the method import? How, how do you locate it? Is it, it is in the Sobit Data Library? The Sobit Data Library is accessible from the landing page uh, of the gateway, so the first page that you see once you 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 log in. So there is, uh, if you can see the arrows here, there is the uh, beaker uh, beaker of, uh, icon on the, your top left, but also um much bigger uh so with data lab uh, link on your uh bottom uh, on your bottom right sorry uh here i want to still say that uh, uh, the method importer name is not method importer you will find it in the documentation that just like the method engine name is not method engine, it's data miner, the method important name software product is statistical algorithm algorithms importer. And um, uh, and it's of course you can it's not just about statistical algorithms, but it's the name that we gave it uh, more than five years ago actually, to the tool. So Supported languages. Supported languages, anything is possible. So you can use R or R in a black box, so, or you can also type uh, your R code. You can use Java, Java, Octa, Python, Gestalt, so bash scripts perhaps, uh, Linux compiled and Windows compiled, and Nine Workflow. And as I, as I just said, the integration has to be carried out using the side, what we call side. 
statistical algorithms important. So let's talk about it. First is, the, uh, let's talk about the modalities. Uh, there are two modalities that you can use to import your uh, algorithm, your, your method. Uh, the editing modality uh, means that you can type your code directly in the tool. In this case, we support only R and uh, pre-installed for its bash scripts. Otherwise, you import them as black boxes. So, um, script in any of this language on your right are integrated as uh, as a wrap, uh, as black boxes, mm -hmm. and you define. You will see that you define what what are the input parameters and what are the output parameters. This is an example of the editing modality. So you can edit your code uh, in, uh, in uh, this is uh, a screenshot actually of the method importers tool. In this case, uh, uh, you say you have to uh, tell the tool where is the line of code uh, for the output and a file and for the input file. And then there is the black box where you part, where you import the files and configure, configure the input and the output parameters of your method. And this is what I'm going to show you now. I will uh, actually uh, guide you through a, a, a porting uh, on, uh, of a, a simple Python method into the infrastructure. So we take a very simple Python program as example. You don't need to know Python to understand uh, this, this, uh, this example. Uh, so we have a program that sort alphabetically the words from a list of string. Uh, so we have from the top a function that print the words one per line. We have the input. The input is a list of string of names, actually. Uh, then there is the function that sort the words. And finally, the output, which called the function above, print words, and print the words. So if you have something like this very simple program, what would you do? The first step that you have to do, sorry, is that you have to separate the input and save the output. So, uh, of course, you cannot uh, give to the importer uh, a script that uh, has input and output uh, in the code. You have to define, uh, you have to have a function that read, for instance, that read the words from a file, which is what uh, is in the example is showing in the load word function. And you have to uh, save for instance, save the words to a file so that once the uh, method is executed, the result is saved to a file that the user can download. So the, the, the program is, is uh, still the same, but we separate the input and the output. So in here, you can see that uh, uh, now we, as input, we expect a file name as input. Then we call the function that will load the words from above and uh, read the, read them from uh, from from uh, from the file. We sort the words and then we use the function save results to save the results on a file called results.txt. Very well. So my script is now ready. I can try it. So for instance, is uh, uh, I type uh, sort. Python 3, sort.py, and I give it the, the, the a word CSV containing the list of words. And the result is that my, my words uh, are sorted alphabetically. So let's import it now. I go in the Sobing Data Lab, I locate the method importer page, and I click Create. When I click Create, I have to specify in which language uh, my, my method is written. So 
So I, in this case, I would select, uh, uh, for instance, Python. Uh, then uh, the, the interface will ask to create a new folder in your workspace for your method, right? So you will create a new folder and create uh, and type the folder name. In this case, I wrote sort of words as the folder name for my method. And this is what is uh, presented to me. Uh, at first. So, uh, general metadata about the method that I'm going to, I'm, I'm importing. So, I have to say what the name is of the method. I have to enter a description and a category, a general category, as, as, as you, you didn't, uh, I didn't make you uh, see it, but uh, uh, the, in the method engine, each method belongs to a category, which you can specify in this case. And then, uh, if, and then I can tell the system if my method is private, then this means that I am the only user able to see it and execute it in the method engine or not. And in this case, if the private option is not set, every user of the lab will be able to run your method once imported. I will also upload my files uh, with drag and drop uh, from the desktop on the interface. In this case, uh, I have only one file, but of course it could be uh, multiple files. So my only file is sort put to pi and uh, the, the, the system automatically um, generate uh, uh, other files that are necessary for its functioning. And what I have to do is to say to the method importer, which is the main file of the program. In this case, sort.py, uh, I select sort.py and I click set code. Next step is I'm going to tell the importer uh, what what are the input? What is the input and the output of the of, of my program? So I will say that uh, as you see, the type supported for for input parameters vary. Uh, I will say in this case that uh, my program uh, expects uh, a txt file containing a list of words. So I will select a file, and I can also type a default um, a default uh, value. Well, of course, in this case, uh, you can en um, enter any, any file name. The output, I will say, is, is still a file in this case, and the result is, is a file containing the words in alphabet, sorted in alphabetic order. And then there is the interpreter part. I will say which version of Python uh, this program uses. Uh, Always, please always check the list at the link above for the pre-installed packages, because for instance, um, there may be a package for your, or dependency jar, whatever, uh, for your program that uh, we do not support. In this case, you can open a support request and we will make it available in the system. But always check first if it's already available. And then I have two options, publish and repackage. So if you don't use the editing mode, you don't need repackage. Repackage uh, is uh, useful for the editing mode because uh, makes the method available in the method engine, but it does not create a graphical user interface already because for instance, the idea is that uh, you, do, in, you, you, you don't type, uh, and you don't change the, the input and output parameters of your R script, but perhaps just the code, and you don't need to recreate the, the graphical user to the import to recreate the graphical user interface because it makes it takes some time. I mean, we're talking about a minute. The publish instead is the full uh, process. 
so it creates the web graphical user interface and makes the web method available in the method engine. What happens uh, when you click publish? Publishing takes about one minute. I will now publish this, uh, this method for in the infrastructure live. But let's see first what uh, what happens. So basically, you will uh, the system will will tell you that the software is pub has been published and that the cloud system is being updated, and then you will receive a notification about publishing sent by email from uh, notification for science, which will tell you the publishing result. In this case, is successful. So let's see now live when I, when one publishes an algorithm so i'm already in the lab because i was in the lab before i click the method importer in this case i will not re-import the method i will reopen the method so i click open I have, of course, to say where is the method. In this case, uh, my method is in the in this folder. So sort words. I select it, and the method is loaded in the interface for you. Let's give it a second. Okay. So as you can see, my method is not private it's not checked so anyone can use it uh, in the method engine part uh, i will uh, you know um, i will not go through the this part i just want to click publish and to show you live what what happens so i click publish it will says that uh, you know it will override the current uh, method available infrastructure you do you confirm yes i confirm So the publishing takes about, I mean, what, what's happening now? Uh, now it's, hap it's happening that uh, <clears throat> the software is being uh, published in the infrastructures and I will receive a notification about it. Now, as I was saying, in the method engine, and the Python example part, the, the algorithm is available is available for anyone to run right so uh if you want to to test it you can do it um so i will just uh, give it a file so the, in this case i will just i just uh, gave a file uh, to sort which is this file here so it contains a list of words. I don't know if you can read it. I'm going to tell it now to uh, execute it. So start the computation. Of course, it's very, the, the, the idea is to, uh, to run heavy computation method, not these simple methods in the infrastructure, but it's just an example. In this case, the output is a file which can be directly shown in the in the interface, right? So this is the result of the computation, the the order of the list of of uh, words. So let's go back to the presentation and provide a bit more details about uh, the working environments that are available. So <clears throat> you have, sorry, when you import your method, um, to import the method, we use a, a, an environment called prototype, which is uh, useful for developing and testing your methods with fewer resources. So there are two separate environments, the prototype and the production. Uh, the production is the one that we make available for the exploratories and it has much more resources. 
there are two exploitation modalities instead, instead that you can use. Uh, there is the shared core instances part where uh, up to four applications share 60 cores and 32 gigas of RAMs. And then there is, there is the worker, so high CPU instances part where the, the, the 16 cores and the 32 gigas of RAM are dedicated as computing resources to your method. Both the modalities, uh, shared core and uh, the worker, uh, share uh, have equal capacities. So, in the prototype, which is as I said available in Subic Data Lab, we have six servers with 60 cores, 60 gigabyte RAM, and 100 gigabyte space each. In production, we have 15 servers, which still 16 cores. 30, 32 gig of RAM and 100 gig of space, but this can be, of course, uh, you know, increased if necessary. So, for instance, if your method uh, you already know that needs 64 gigas of RAM, we can, uh, uh, you know, we can manage this kind of request. This is the same page of the previous slide uh, with documentation and support, and that's all for for the important important tutorial. Uh, so, Beatrice, so I give if, uh, floor to you. If you have any question, please write in the chat. No question at the moment. So. Uh... I give uh, the floor to Pasquale Pagano in the meanwhile, if some questions arrive, uh, we can uh, skip again to uh, Massimiliano. Okay, so now um, Pasquale Pagano uh, from uh, CNR, uh, he works uh, in, uh, he's a um, VP leader, uh, of VP9, uh, infrastructure and computing network, and uh, he will present us uh, how to integrate a new data set. Uh, Pasquale, you can start because no questions are arriving. Uh, in a case, uh, we can uh, talk about the question uh, later. Please. Okay, so thank you, Beatrice. And now in this last part uh, of this webinar, we will see, you know, uh, additional details about concept that we have seen already presented both by Valerio and Massimiliano before. So I'm uh, talking about, you know, several different uh, patterns for enabling scientific collaboration. So let me start from uh, and let me say a definition of scientific collaboration that um, that can be defined as the interaction taking place within a social context uh, among two or more scientists that facilitate the sharing or meaning a completion of task uh, with the respect to a mutually shared uh, goal, superordinate goal. So the idea is. Uh, in the big data that we have is to promote the, the, this sharing of um, meaning and through the, a number of technologies that help, you know, people and scientists, you know, to collaborate. Starting from the capability of the users, of, of researchers, you know, to share their data set, their methods, their processes, and the, the way they perform experiments um, using uh, you know the infrastructure so it, it's not only a matter of sharing files but also you know as massimiliano presented you know sharing you know a process in such a way that another person another researcher you know can repeat the same execution see the results you know comment the results and you know work with another people another person that is not you know physically uh, close to to him so to do this, uh, uh, to support, you know, these, we have developed, you know, uh, technologies. 
uh, you have seen the part on the computation. Now we will focus, you know, on the part on specifically, you know, on sharing. So sharing can be selective sharing, meaning that um, I select another person and I share within a method or you know a data set or the, the results of an experiment and so on. Can be in a controlled environment. This is you know the case where. Uh, a user decided to share, you know, uh, his uh, research artifacts, you know, in a laboratory or in an exploratory. So with all, all the members uh, of the environment, and uh, we call it, you know, controlled sharing. And then there is, you know, the sharing instead, you know, when I publish something, and so publishing means, you know, that I'm making available the results uh, of my research activity to people that I don't know uh, and uh, that will, will be able to exploit, uh, you know, those, those products, research products. So for this environment, you know, we, we create, you know, technologies. The first one that you have seen a bit in the previous presentation is the workspace. And the workspace select, uh, support uh, both, you know, selective and, um, and the control of the sharing. So, uh, how it looks like? Uh, it is a typical, uh, let me see if I see them organized in folder, but you know, the idea is to make it a central app of all the activities that the researcher perform uh, in the so big data infrastructure. So, it collects, you know, as Massimiliano presented, you know, the results of the computation automatically. It collects, you know, any data that you generate or upload in your uh when you perform your research activity plus it collects any other type of data that you wish you know to keep and preserve on on the cloud storage so its capabilities are similar to the ones that you can imagine you can organize your content in folders you can manage permission on those folders you can share links uh both you know to single files or folders you can clearly upload uh, multiple files uh, very simply with the drag and drop. And there are you know, specific features uh, that are you know, uh, important also to guarantee you know, the uh, persistence of the results and the reproducibility of the experiment. One is the versioning. So anytime you upload or generate a new content that has the same name, you know, it will generate automatically a version. And you will be able to access, you know, the previous version and download that where, you know, them. Uh, all the operations are traced, you know, are counted in such a way that you see, you can see, you know, the, the history of the activities performed in any single folder or, or on any single specific file. And the system automatically generates a notification when something of the, uh, some of these uh, activities are performed by any user that is authorized you know, to access. So in terms of uh, folder types, there are the private folders. Uh, private folders are you know, private only to you, meaning that you, know, you can save your content. That you, you, you are the only one that is authorized, you know, that will be authorized you know, to access and download uh, that files. Uh, there are shared folders where you decide uh, who is authorized to access the files that you are sharing. There are, you know, yearly folders that are, uh, that is, you know, the environment where, you know, all the members of the ERE can access the, the folder. And there are public folders that are um, folders that anyone with the link can access the files. Um, so you can organize your content according, you know, to the, to the policies that you want to attach, you know, to your products, to your research products. In terms of uh, uh, permission and policies, there are, you know, three different uh, permissions. Uh, clearly, there is a modality read only where you you can share with another with another group of people, but you are the only one that can add, modify, or delete, you know, content. There is a modality write only where uh, any user can only update and uh, delete uh, you know, their own files. And the bright thing instead is where any user you know, can update and delete files that are uh, uploaded by other people. 
there is uh, clearly OSART the sharing is the folder owner, and but he can nominate administrators, you know, delegating in this way management right on the, on other people. And um, there are you know subfolders uh, that they inherit you know by the, the the permission expressed you know on the on the root folder, but you know this permission can be restricted. So I can move, for example, from uh, a write any to a read only subfolder. Uh, how to access, you know, the workspace is, uh, I mean, when you log in and you enter, you know, the so big data gateway, there is uh, in the top left, you know, an icon that uh, remember you, you know, uh, the idea of the folder. And if you click, you get the folder, then uh, you, 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 you are to the workspace and then you can interact with the workspace, uh, you know, using the button that is on the top or you can use the right click. For example, to share a file, you know, you select you share a folder, you select the folder, and then you right click and select the function share, and uh, you know, a pop-up window you know, will appear where you select the people and the right that you want to use you know, to share your folder. You can easily see the history SSH, uh, where you see the operation uh, will perform, you know, the, 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 uh, the activity and when it was performed, and you can see also the versions. And when you click and see the version, then you can download the version, or you can get a public link to any previous version and that is not visible you know, in the main interface of the workspace. Um, so it's very easy to use. Um, and uh, also uh, in terms of volume, you know, we guarantee to any user, you know, 100 gigabytes when you register. So it should be enough space, enough volume that you can use, you know, to, to perform your experiment. But clearly if you need more, you know, uh, we can authorize, you know, additional uh, space, you know, to your workspace. Um, the other way, you know, to make available your research product uh, is instead through the publication in the catalog. So, and again, you know, uh, this can be used, you know, to share, and to publish, you know, any data set you, uh, you own or any method, I mean, you are used. The catalog is, you know, a normal catalog. It supports, you know, search and browse. Um, and uh, every item that is published is characterized by type and uh, by a, a number of metadata, an open set of metadata. And uh, uh, the files attaching you know, to the type are called you know, resources. You see here, for example, there are some numbers about the big data catalog so far. There are 210 elements. And uh, these uh, items are can can be also organized, you know, in groups that are a way, you know, to create collection of objects that are, you know, and we create a group for each of the exploratory that are accessible through the uh, Subic Data Gateway. Um, what is an item? So uh, we have seen uh, starting, you know, this webinar, you know, in, uh, through Valerio uh, presentation and also in a similar presentation. So let, now let me define a bit more formally what is an item. An item is any research object that is associated, you know, is published by an organization. The, the organization created the context is uh, namely the, the virtual research environment where this operation is performed and it, it identifies you know, the, uh, the authorization. The item can be in one or more groups. So it can be associated with one or more group, it can be public or private, it can be, um, we can specify it is searchable or not. Um, to any item, a number of resources can be associated uh, if a resource is uh, uh, if a resource is associated uh, to to the item, then you know a number of metadata are available. Uh, these are you know the clearly the URL of the resource, the format, the name, and the description of the resource. 
there are tax and licensing that are specified uh, for for any item and are mandatory plus a number of attributes the mandatory are title description order and maintainer but in, uh, additional you know metadata specific metadata can be associated to any item in the in the catalog so this is let me say the, the item model and the, here we see uh, example you see the title and description as it appears in the item page that you you access in the through the catalog these are the tags that have been added uh, the, the name of the organization, description of the organization, the license associated to the product, the number of resources, so the way the, this item can be uh, exploited, you know, so can be used. Uh, there are, you know, the, um, this is a persistent identifier uh, that is a persistent URL that you can use you know to share to re to refer you know to link and also you know to access the object um, and uh, we generate also a qr code if uh, that can be used and then there are specific metadata in, in, the, in this example that i use you know there are uh, links you know to the geo network for a special product there are the resource preview and the other you know just special information um, Properties. So it's important, you know, to distinguish between public and private uh, items. When you publish a, a public object uh, item, you mean that the metadata are accessible to guest users. So without uh, a, a subject that then, while you know the resources and for the files require a valid uh, user identity. Uh, when you publish instead a private object this is accessible only to the members of the big data community and this appears you know in the interface in this way i mean when you click if you have not uh, uh, if you have still to log in uh, when you click you know a, a pop-up you know uh, tell you that you have to be registered and you have to log in and instead if it is private you see that only uh, but, um, you know, the title is to show, you know, to the, to the people. Uh, as I said, you know, any item is associated with the type. A type is a first class concept in the infrastructure uh, in the catalog. It is very important because it allows, you know, first of all, you know, to interact with the, the, the catalog. Uh, it supports, you know, filtering. You can accept only the object of a specific type and any item is annotated with the type of the object in the big data we have you know the data set the method the training material the applications and the experiment as the types but you know types can be defined you know uh, by using uh, the service that uh, you know by using the api of the service to authorize people and to define a new type is sufficient you know to specify um, uh, to send you know this list of uh, metadata field that is uh, this xml you know contain uh, for each metadata field of the type a number of uh, properties and the properties clearly are the name if it is mandatory the data type of the object uh, the maximum number of times it may occur in the, uh, in the metadata item and other you know of values um two uh, a couple of uh, information three mainly you know to each uh, 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 metadata item it's possible to associate a, a category and the category is defined just with the category name a category title in the description and it, it is used you know to group um and display, you know, in the in the, in the controller the way, you know, uh, a set of metadata fields that belongs, you know, to the same, uh, let me say, that to describe a common uh, capability of the item. Um, the temporal dimension is defined by using the standard ISO uh, 8601, and the spatial dimension is defined, you know, by using JJSON. So. 
then when you have integrated, you know, uh, and publish uh, your item, uh, an automatic post uh, may be generated and published, you know, in the so big data community in such a way that it make it, you know, uh, known to everyone that a new object has been published in the catalog. And through the interface of the catalog, you can get, you know, the, uh, a shareable link in such a way that you can send this and also you can include in publication or, or, or you can share with other people. From the workspace that I presented before, by right click on any folder, you see that there is a, a function that is publishing on catalog. This means that, you know, if you have a set of files that represent your data set, in a folder, you can right click immediately and an interface uh, you know, appears. And this interface allows you to, first of all, to, organize, to select, you know, where you wish, you know, which organization, if you are authorized, you know, to publish in more than one organization, you select, you know, the, the organization where you, you want to publish. Then you specify a number of uh, uh, metadata, clearly the author, the name, and the maintainer and so on. These are already known because you are, uh, I mean, you are a registered user, so the, the interface is prefilled, but then you select uh, the type, and according to the type, you know, additional uh, interfaces, you know, uh, will appear that will allow you to, to specify uh, all the metadata that are um, defined, you know, for that type. When you have published a, 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 an item in the catalog, you may also upload to Zenodo. I believe that you know what is Zenodo. Zenodo is a repository uh, of uh, open access uh, um, research product that is merged by the open air infrastructure in Europe. And um, when you upload an object to Zenodo, it also generates a DOI. So from the catalog, you may also decide, you know, to further promote your product by just clicking upload to Zenodo. And again, you know, an interface is um, appear. And this interface is prefilled with the, the metadata that you have already put, you know, in the, in the catalog, but, but clearly that you can edit and modify before publishing in Zenodo. And then you select uh, the files, you know, the, the, the manifestation that you want also to publish on the model. I mean, if in, in the in big data catalog you have put, for example, three or four files, you may decide, you know, to just publish one of these files in the, in the Zenodo catalog. Uh, all that I presented uh, in terms of catalog, you know, can be also uh, uh, I mean, you can interact with the catalog also by using a direct, you know, the service uh, that is called, you know, GCAT service. And you can perform almost all the operation, like, you know, creating an item, updating the item, delete or publish a specific group and so on. And this means that, for example, one of your method, uh, uh, when you execute a method, you may also decide to add, you know, a part of, on automatic publication of the result of the execution directly from you know, the method. So the method the first is executed, and then the result you know, may be published automatically in the catalog. In the catalog. It will be exactly you know, the same if you specify all the mandatory elements uh, and so on. And uh, that's all, you know, this is the part of the documentation. There are several links with all the APIs that you may use. And clearly, if you need the support, you know, this, uh, uh, there is this support for sense.org where you find useful information and the way to interact with the, the team that's uh, managing the infrastructure. That's all from my side. I see that there are some questions. Happy to see. Okay, so thank you, Pasquale. Uh, before answering the, the question, I would like to give the floor to uh, Roberto Trasarti, which has to add something to what you said. Please, uh, Roberto. Okay. Roberto? Yes, <laughs> coming. Uh, let me share the, the screen. Okay. Um, so 
um, only to add uh, something about uh, the uh, the catalog because uh, I mean uh, you see that uh, uh, the infrastructure has uh, uh, a lot of powerful powerful tool and um, but sometimes uh, let's say that uh, we uh, we face uh, the reality of uh, not be able to share uh, all the data set uh, for real so uh, in the sense that uh, sometimes uh, uh, partners has uh, uh, constraints uh, about uh, sharing the data uh, and make them uh, public. So uh, I, only, uh, I want only uh, to add uh, a bit of information about the fact that uh, as Pasquale have uh, uh, shown before, it's possible to add uh, to the catalog uh, only the metadata of a specific data set, uh, because uh, I mean, the, the, the project in general uh, has many, way of, uh, many ways of uh, accessing uh, to, to the data in different modalities, uh, not only directly by the portal, but also with uh, transnational access, which is a way to uh, uh, go for the people to move, uh, not in this period. <laughs> Let's let's hope that uh, we'll we'll uh, uh, come back soon uh, to the uh, to the normal uh, situation. But um, let's say that uh, sometimes uh, uh, some uh, um, uh, institution may have a very nice uh, data set, uh, but it is possible it's not possible to share it uh, in a pub in a public way. Uh, but maybe if people uh, go uh, to the to those institution, they may access directly, uh, let's say, on site. Um, I mean, in the platform, uh, this uh, uh, apply in a way, in, in this way. For example, if from the, cat the, dad, the, the catalog, I look for, uh, let's say, data sets, uh, very general uh, data set. Uh, you will see that we have uh, a list of uh, several data sets that are available there and you can download them. But there are also some like, uh, let's say, for example, this uh, car sharing data set, which is uh, that uh, data uh, about uh, people moving and uh, sharing uh, trips. And for privacy reason and uh, companies' uh, um, uh, agreement between uh, the laboratory uh, having uh, uh, this data and the company, it's impossible to put this directly online. But in, or, but in order to make it uh, findable and uh, so people can keep in touch, uh, talk directly to the institution, uh, agree on a visit uh, to the transnational access, uh, it's very important to put it uh, uh, in the catalog and uh, uh, make it uh, uh, findable. For example, in this case, uh, we say that, okay, uh, there is no data, real data here to download, but you can access it uh, through transnational access. Okay, so only to, to, I mean, because this is a, a, a big point uh, that uh, many uh, people usually uh, point out at a certain point uh, in the real world. Um, okay. This is another example uh, of data set, for example, retail market, again, uh, is a user, uh, user uh, uh, behaviors and uh, for many reasons, uh, it's impossible to be sh to, to to share it uh, directly, uh, but we have a, a lot of success stories of people coming to the to uh, to our lab and making the search with uh, with it. Okay, sorry for uh, yeah. the addition. Thank you. <laughs> no, thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Roberto. Just to add, Beatrice, if you can that you know, the infrastructure supports uh, um, also you know the creation of. Um, Tailored virtual search environment, you know, tailored laboratories where, where you know, restricted the number of people, you know, can share their content and uh, their data set, and um, uh, where you know they share and they can also, you know, have a, you know a dedicated catalog, you know, internally to the virtual search environment. I mean, everything that I say, you know, can be restricted to a specific environment if needed and uh, where you can manage you know the properly the access to only authorized people to the to the content you know making it accessible in the catalog is also useful to make it searchable and you know in a, in a more easy way uh, that's not 
means necessarily that has to be public. By the way, there were a number of other questions um, yeah. that we may try to answer. Yeah, so uh, there's a question from Andrea Manzi. Maybe uh, Roberto can answer to that question. Andrea Manzi would like to know, can I import a method in the engine and refer it in a paper so that the people can execute it? Uh, okay, sure, I can answer uh, in a uh, yeah, I mean, this is uh, one of the main uh, ob objectives of uh, of so big data because uh, um, having a, met a method there it means that uh, any any researcher may um, sign up to the platform, uh, go there, look at the the, the data, the, maybe also the data that you use, uh, and uh, or the or the method of bot actually and uh, um, replicate the experiment that we have done. This is uh, actually uh, what we hope. <laughs> yeah, um, just to complement Roberto, you know, uh, the, I mean, one of the um, persistent URL that we uh, is possible to access when you import a method is also, you know, one that you can easily refer in your paper. And when you use this link, there are two options. Let me say one that is already pre-configured with your, you know, with the same input parameter and condition where you executed it, in such a way that any user reading the article, you know, can repeat exactly the experiment and understand better the results of the experiment that you you are, you know, I mean, you presented in the paper. Or you can put a link, you know, where instead, you know, the method can be used by, by the user, by the reader but you know without the input parameter in such a way that he can customize the execution as, as uh, he, he, he or she needs okay thank you and um, there is another question maybe o pasquale or massimiliano you can uh, answer uh, giorgio barnabò um, would like to know what is the difference between the so big data infrastructure and the other common integrated data analysis uh, environment like uh, SAS? Pasquale? Uh, yeah, okay. Um, thanks, Giorgio, for your question. I mean, so big data is an infrastructure that what uh, is born you know, to serve uh, a community, a specific community, and uh, this intended, you know, uh, I mean, it's a design, you know, for the for the scientists, and uh, the idea is to support them in all the activities uh, of their research. So this is why, you know, Massimiliano stressed, you know, the concept of uh, reproducibility or reuse of the code and um, the possibility to share an experiment in all the phases. So you can start, for example, um, integrating your method. You, you can share your method uh, even uh, without making it public available in the VRE. You can start sharing the code in such a way that different person, you know, different researchers, you know, can work on the same code. You, you can share the results and, uh, I mean, you can fine tune the, your method, uh, at, you know, with the other colleagues. And then when it is ready, you may decide to publish. I mean, this is an environment for that it's not only a computational environment, but it's an environment, you know, that supports, you know, and promotes uh, as much as possible, you know, the concept of scientific collaboration. So the computing part is not different, let me say, from other, um, you know, computational engine that you may use, but, you know, the set of integrated services to support, you know, the researchers are the, are the ones, you know, that characterize you know, so big data infrastructure, I would say. Okay, thank you very much, Pasquale. I don't see any other question. So I say, I can, I think we can finish. Uh, I would like to thank all the speakers of today and uh, the attendees that uh, have been with us. Uh, I recall that uh, we will upload uh, the video on uh, YouTube uh, and we will share with you also the link with the slides uh, that we presented today. So you can uh, uh, have all the material you need. Okay, so thanks to everybody. 
and uh, see you at the next uh, webinar. <laughs>